Welcome back guys. So today I'm going to show you guys how I made this duty gear rack. One thing I'm going to, this one's a pretty basic, pretty, pretty simple idea. You know, um, there's some more things you can do with them and I will be doing that and expanding as I go along. This is a rather deep one and there is a reason for that. And it's kind of basic at this point because my intentions for this one, for this duty gear rack were to put a safe in this part here. And I ordered that safe off Amazon and it came in the mail today as I was finishing the product. So I had looked at the measurements online and started making this exactly as should be to fit. I even double checked afterwards. Let me tell you guys, I'm kind of frustrated because I looked at the dimensions of the safe and it said it was 9.1 inches deep, which this is like nine. This is like literally exactly 9.1 inches deep little deeper than I would actually prefer to have. It said 6.7 wide, 6.7 high. So that's what this box is measured out to be. Slightly larger than that. This is 9.1 inches wide. So it would fit in that way. It's not gonna fit though. I intended to have this go right here. So I'm gonna save this safe. I'm gonna make another one and guess what? It's gonna have a compartment that wide. Very frustrating. There's no going back on this now. It is what it is. How, I, how I'm going to hang this and how I recommend hanging these is to get these heavy duty mirror and wall hangers, picture hangers. This particular one says it can hold up to 300 pounds. Even if you put your vest up here and you put your belt on there or whatever you would put on this thing, plus the weight of the wood, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. I'm sure you know how these things work. Anyways, like I said, this one's rated to hold up to 300 pounds and it's almost the entire length of it so it's going to distribute the weight nicely so i feel like this is a good option for mounting let's go ahead and dive in and show you how i did this so to begin i wanted to start this by cutting the main backer piece to this uh duty gear rack and i decided to go with the width of it being basically the same as that hanger that i was referring to and then when it comes to the height of this piece, I just use the board that I had. Now the next piece I was cutting was for the mantle. And as I had stated, I was going off dimensions for a safe I had ordered off Amazon but didn't have yet. So that was 9.1 inches deep. Add another inch for it to go over the top of the backer piece. So this was a little bit more than 10 inches. I also need to mention somewhere in here how I have a bench saw. It's a very old bench saw and I'm not getting straight cuts with it anymore. I'm finding that the railing is loose on it and it will not secure down very tight. So I'll be trying to make a cut and it'll actually end up kind of pushing and wiggling itself to the side. So this project ended up being much more difficult than had I had a proper table saw. But as you saw before, I am able to get it done with the circular saw and the straight edge I have there. So. Using some more basic tools, you can still get the job done. It just takes longer. Okay, hopefully guys, I have mentioned that there are a few obstacles with this duty gear rack. It's, uh, it's deeper in depth because of the safe that I'm putting in. I am putting in a small safe I bought off Amazon for like $30, like a hotel safe. It is 9.1 inches deep. So of course I can't have that safe sticking out. And, and so we got a lot more depth here. Where I'm at. So I started off here and I decided because it is so deep that I did not want to start at the very end, way back here. I'm like, man, that just seems so extreme. And so this piece is going to sit best, this being the back, this being the very front, because of this particular piece and the cut and everything I've worked with. And I came to the conclusion that if I work my way out two inches, two inches there, and then I moved it. Now I'm on my pivot point. I derived that 45 degrees, I mean, you know, that's cutting it right in half. I didn't know how extreme that angle would look. I think from back here, it would look real extreme. I think coming out, having a little bit that comes out from the very bottom and then working a 45 is going to be a good look. And then I'm not going to start from here, although it's darn close, but uh, I just, I don't want to get off. I want these to be exact and precise. 
and this is all excess that's going to be cut off so i don't want to start by flushing up this side if that makes any sense to what i'm saying and and i mean part of this is just because of my cuts and whatnot so i'm still going to on each of the three of them start from here this is where i want to start with my flush uh because this is going to be the back it's going to be right on here so i'm going to do the same process for the other two two inches make a little mark bring it right there to that corner get my 45 you can see my little bit slightly bigger mark flip it line up from the bottom to the top that's where i've got my pencil now and now it's just a matter of making a straight cut cutting that piece off yeah so there's not an exact science to where and why and how far i decided to cut that edge i just eyeballed it took a measurement and i did like the angle of it i like the way it looked so there you have it so of course i did that times three because we're gonna have one center divide piece i guess it's not really centered but you know what i'm saying there and then the two on the ends i also had to really pay attention you saw me flip that like three times there's that big knot in there you can really get in trouble when you uh, are trying to cut or screw through a knot so be cognizant of that and then i'm finally ready to cut my two shelves the short one and of course the long one and the reason this took me so long and you see some movement and taking pieces off and back on is I was putting marks everywhere because I wanted to be absolutely precise with where I placed these boards. I did not want to splinter or go through the wood. I wanted to drill through and get right into the middle of each board and keep this as tidy as possible. All right, so now it's time to assemble this so that I can kind of get everything completely uniform and cleaned up. Uh, I got my space cleaned up, you know, I, it was a nice pause from the work. So I don't, I struggle sometimes with getting excited and the ball gets rolling and I just really want to finish the product, finish what I'm making. And I end up cutting a few corners and getting a little impatient. So it was a nice way to relax, slow down some of the tools I'm using here. So I'm going to pre-drill these holes so I don't split my lumber. I've spent a lot of time cutting these pieces as precise as I can today without using a table saw. Um, I don't want to screw them up. I want to keep them. I want them to be good. I'm using a countersink bit. Uh, that would be this part right here. You can kind of see that. And so it will sink in the hole so that the head of the screw isn't on the surface and isn't pushing in and, you know, end up tearing things up or whatnot. It's going to give it a nicer finish. It's going to hide it a little bit more. I actually also stopped and went and bought some wood screws. Um, if you're like me, I'm guilty sometimes of just using any screw I have around the house. Um, my brother likes to laugh at me because I think that drywall screws are catch-alls that are meant for everything. Not literally, but, you know, I buy drywall screws and I just use them on anything and everything. And uh, so that's one of my guilty things. So I went and I actually bought, because I needed a good length anyways, and I want these to be completely as, as good of a finish as I can. So I bought these premium interior cabinet screws. The head on them kind of rounded off. Like I said, they're going to sink in. Um, it should hold pretty nice, and uh, they're they're thin. Side, so you know, I don't have a great big wide screw head. I think sometimes with drywall screws, that's probably where some of my problem comes in. Is I splinter the wood. This should do do nice. So um, we're going with seven inches high. That's going to be a little bit extra. It's about 0.3, about a quarter of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch, more than what our um, safe is going to fit in here is going to be. So I'm sorry. I want to be able to put the screws right down the middle of this board. So I first made a notch. I know you couldn't see what I was doing there. It's seven inches. Then I measured from there. Make sure I do this right. Yep. So now my notch that I'm actually going to put my line is seven and three eighths inch. I'm putting these marks now so I know where the screws need to go but what these ones are going to do is show me where exactly to put this board so that I know I'm lined up perfectly. Making sure everything was lined up perfectly pre-drilling the holes and then using the cabinet screws to assemble this piece by piece was probably the slowest and most painstaking part of the process but it was critical to not screwing this up, not splintering any of the pieces of wood and just keeping everything looking good. Once everything was assembled and as it was gonna be, there were a few imperfections that I needed to take care of and fix. 
like this board there's a little lip right there the the uh, shelf was just slightly farther out than the sides so I used that hand planer then I decided to use a round over on my router and edge off the top mantle to make it look just a little more tidy you see me doing that here which really I think gives it a more quality finish look and then lastly I got out my palm sander and I cleaned up the entire surface I used a 180 grit on that sandpaper and of course it is an orbital sander I don't think I stated that about now I was loving the look of this duty rack and it really pained me but I knew I had to take it apart to keep it quality for one I was gonna to need to glue together the pieces as well as screw them in and it needed painted so once disassembled, I used that leaf blower and blew it off and got some tack cloth to clean it up. Got a light layer of primer on both sides of, of uh, every piece of wood here. I'm going to do the thin blue line and to make sure I get nice straight lines, I'm going to undercoat this area blue, the general area. The main color of this thing is going to be black, so I'm going to get this blue, let it get really good and dried on here, and then I'm going to use painter's tape uh, and just put a strip of painter's tape down it and then paint everything else black. I think that'll be easier than trying to paint a straight line. This is like a sharp line tape. It's supposed to be a little bit better than... The traditional stuff, who knows. Three inches down looks good to me. I'm going to pencil mark that on the edge. This is going to be behind the side piece, the board, so you'll never even see that pencil mark anyways. Same thing over here, three inches. paint right over this over my painters tape line but I'm gonna try not to push too much paint along on that and I'm gonna try not to push it into it I also noticed on the back sides of these when I started this uh, black paint yesterday it absolutely took two coats it wasn't even close so I'm not gonna worry about how thick this goes on our paint is dry and we're ready to put this thing back together I'm also pretty nervous about pulling this tape off. I guess, hey, what's the worst case scenario? I'd have to touch up some things. Let's see how this goes. I would say that went pretty well actually now there is some very minute touch up I'm gonna need to do over here you know honestly what happened was when I did my second coat of uh, paint I thought that my edge of the uh, tape was like all the way down to here for some reason and so I was brushing and I could see lit or rolling I literally could see where I rolled a second coat was like right here so I only have one coat right here I'm going to try to do this right now, and I'm pretty nervous about it, actually. But we'll, let's do this, and we'll do it on camera, and we'll see what happens. I guess. Okay. All right, so I must say the crispness of our line worked out great. But it is time to finally get started on putting this thing back together. I'm gonna use one of these brushes to reduce, like squeeze, squeeze out, but I don't wanna put it on my finger because then I'll get it on the fresh paint, the glue. So I'm gonna continue to use this brush. 
throughout this. Reassembling once all the holes were piloted was much, much easier than doing it the first time. Ugh, definitely gonna have to touch that up. Don't know what I could really do differently there. It's a tight space to put the screw in. Can't tell what's going on there. The chuck of the drill scraped the bottom of the shelf, and that's why we got that. This is looking rough, but it'll clean up real, real easily. I'm not too worried yet. A little annoyed, not worried. Now I don't come back to it in the video, but the bottom of that shelf, I wipe it off with a cloth, and then I retouch up the paint, and it's perfect in the end. Yes, this is a staged shot because I completely forgot to turn the camera on. After that, I used this aerosol can of polyurethane. And as you see, it got pretty uh, fumey in there, so I actually put on a mask. And then, of course, I used the pipes. They're just black pipe. I think they were half inch. And I had the certain joints I wanted, just put everything together by hand. Although I did end up using a vise just to get it a little bit tighter in the end. And there you guys have it. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.